In this video, we're going to look at finding the volume of a cone. If we have a cone with a base radius of r and a perpendicular height of h, the volume is given as one third pi r squared h. I think the easiest way to look at this is to look at the comparison between the volume of a cone and the volume of a cylinder. If we have a cylinder, to find the volume, we find the area of the base, which is just the circle, and multiply it by the perpendicular height. Perpendicular simply means now that these two lengths are at right angles. So we can say now that the volume of this cylinder, which of course is a prism as it's got a constant cross section, will be the area of a circle, which is going to be pi r squared, and then we multiply it now by the height, which is h. If we have a cone with the same dimensions as a cylinder, it simply has one third of the volume of the cylinder. So if I wanted to fill this cylinder up with the water from the cone, we would have to fill three of the full cones to get one full cylinder. Or if you like, if you had a full cylinder, you could fill three entire cones with the same dimensions. So if you're struggling to remember this formula, simply think about the volume of a cylinder and divide your answer by three. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. So what we need to do here is find the volume of a cylinder with a base radius of four and a perpendicular height of nine. Remember, this is just a circle. The volume is given as one third pi r squared h. So let's simply fill in the numbers. We've got one third pi, then we have now r squared. Well, that's going to be four squared, which is 16, multiplied now by the height. The height is going to be nine. We can see now that this is going to give us can either do it on a calculator or you can do it mentally. 9 divided by 3 gives us 3. This will give us now 48 pi centimetres cubed. This is what we call an exact answer because my answer is in terms of pi. We can of course get a, a decimal answer for that using a calculator but if this is a non-calculator question and you're asked to leave it in terms of pi then we would simply have now 48 pi centimetres cubed. Remember, whenever we have a volume, the units will be cubed. So if we wanted to see what this looks like in terms of a decimal, so 48, then we hit shift, we hit pi, and that's going to give us now about 151 centimetres cubed. Or if you like, you could say it's 150.8 centimetres cubed, correct to one decimal place. So nice and straightforward as we have the, uh, the perpendicular height and the base radius. If we look at the next one, well we got 2.4 meters, that is the perpendicular height, and this time we've got a diameter that is 180 centimeters. So let's just write this out. We've got now the volume is going to be one third pi r squared h. The first thing that we need to do is find the base radius. If we've got 180 centimetres as the diameter of the circle on the bottom, we need to half that. So that's going to give me 90 centimetres. If we consider now that this is in metres, we might want to write that this is going to be 0 0.9 metres. Alternatively, you could convert this to centimetres and have that as 240 centimetres. I'm going to do this in metres. It really doesn't matter. You can do it in centimetres if you want, as long as you're being consistent. So the volume is going to be one third pi. Remember, pi is just a number, 3.14159 and so on and so forth. 
If you don't have it on your calculator, you can use 3.14 or 3.142. It will advise you on the front of whichever exam you're doing. So what we're going to have in is the radius squared. So we'll have 0 0.9, remember I've decided to work in meters, 0 0.9 squared multiplied now by 2.4. So we can get now the volume for this and we can go straight through a calculator with this and we can write that this is going to be pi multiplied by 0.9 squared multiplied by 2.4 and we're going to divide our answer now by 3. That gives us now 2.035 so I'm going to say that this is going to be now 2 and Point zero, and we'll go for two decimal places on this. I'm choosing the level of accuracy. The question doesn't ask me to, so it's just 2.04. And that, remember, is going to be in metres, and that will be metres cubed as it's a volume. If you'd done it in centimetres, you would have had V is equal to one third pi. You would have had now 90, because it was centimetres, which we would square, multiplied by 200 and 40 and that would give us our answer um, if you've done anything with the uh, scale factor enlargements with volume then what we'd have our answer here would end up being a hundred cubed times bigger um, again if you haven't done that it's perfectly fine you can simply put these into the calculator but if we did that, we would see that it's going to be 100 uh, cube times bigger. Let's just switch this over. So you'd have 90, and then we would have on here 240. And that would give us now this value right here, which is huge. So there we go. Nice and logical, nice and straightforward. Okay, let's look at the next one. This one is slightly more challenging. When we are working out the volume of a cone, we need the perpendicular height. These cones are what we call right cones, such that if we draw now a line down, this should be perpendicular. So it's not a, a massively accurate sketch, but what we would have here, let's just get rid of that, we would have now the height will be at right angles now with the base radius. If we went ahead and cut now across and looked at this as a cross section, we would have a right angle triangle. So if I just drew this up, if we looked at this as a 2D shape, what we would have is the following. We would have the base radius here, we would have the perpendicular height here, and the slant height of the cone just here. We can use Pythagoras theorem to find now the missing height of this triangle. So this is 5 and this is 3. We want now the height which is going to give us now what we need to go ahead and work the formula out. So Pythagoras theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We know the squares of the two shorter sides are equal now to the square of the longer side. So when we add these two squared we get this one squared. So we'll have h squared plus 3 squared is equal to 5 squared. If you've already spotted that this is one of our special triples, perfectly fine. Go ahead and write the number down. If not, we've got h squared will be equal to 25 minus 9. So h squared is equal to 16. So we need the positive square root of 16. The height is 4. So what we've got now on here, and we can put this on, this length right here is going to be 4. So if this was drawn as we did before to the side, then what we'd have is this height just here, and that would just extend on a little. Let's just do that. Uh, in fact, it's a bit messy, isn't it? Um, let's just extend that line. This height here would be now four centimeters. So if you're given the slant height, simply use Pythagoras theorem as these are right cones. So we can now say that the volume using the formula one third pi r squared h is going to give us now the volume is going to be one third pi we've got r squared which is going to be now this quantity here which is going to be three squared which is nine multiplied by the height 
So again, if we wanted an exact answer, 9 over 3 is 3, so S is going to give me 12 pi, and that will be centimetres cubed. So that is an exact answer. You can go ahead and find the decimal answer by simply putting that into a calculator, hitting your S to D button, and then that will give you the value. So, nice little question here. Uh, let's look at another one. Let's go for this one. So we've got a perpendicular height of three centimetres, a base radius, and I'm gonna to have to shorten that, knowing that that's slight, there we go, that looks a bit better, a base radius of t centimetres, and a volume of 5.2 centimetres cubed. Lots of examples we've done have been in centimetres. Um, they could be in anything, any length. It could be metres, kilometres, inches, whatever. Don't worry, or even units. Don't worry that we're, we're just working in centimetres. It seems the easiest unit to sort of default to, I suppose. So all we've got to do is work this backwards. So let's just remind ourselves, volume is one third pi r squared h. So what we have this time is the volume at 5.2. Remember, what we're trying to do here is find the value of t. t is simply the length of a radius. So what we've got then is this is going to be one third pi, then we're going to have t squared, because that's the radius squared, multiplied by 3. This one's quite nice because it simply drops the 3 and the third off. Um, this one's been quite kind. It won't always happen. So we can write that 5.2 is equal to pi multiplied now by t squared. Pi is just a number, so we can write that this is 5.2 divided by pi is equal to t squared. So we can say the positive square root, because it's a length, it's got to be positive, we can't have a negative. And of course, when we square root t here, or square root this quantity and square root t, it will have a plus or minus answer. 5.2 divided by pi, and that is going to give us what we want. So all we do in a calculator is do the square root of 5.2. 5.2 divided now by the value of pi. That's going to give us about 1.29. So 1.29, uh, and that's the value of t, and I've given that now to two decimal places, I think. Uh, yeah, 2 dp. Uh, and I'll just write that in. So there we go. We can work forwards, we can work backwards, it really doesn't matter. Uh, if we were asked to find height, at least we wouldn't have to square root it at the end. Um, but as you can see, nothing, nothing crazy. Right, let's look at one more. What we've got here is the curved surface area is 70 millimetres squared. We've got a base radius of 4 millimetres and we need to find the volume. What we first need to understand, and if you don't know this, that's perfectly fine, the curved surface area of a cone is given as pi r l, or pi l r, it really doesn't matter. We can multiply in any order, pi l r. So if we look at what we've got here, we can go ahead and find this length first, then we're going to have to find this length. So we're going to double step this to find the volume. So we need now this, but we can only find the perpendicular height once we've got the slant height. At that point, I will use uh, Pythagoras again. So what we can say then is 70 is equal to pi multiplied by the radius multiplied now. And I'll just call this one L. Let's just put on that this is L. This is L, and remember this is H. L is the slant height, uh, not the perpendicular height. So multiplied by L. So what we can say then is 70 over pi times 4, or 4 pi, is equal to L. At this stage, we have a little right angle triangle. So what I'm going to do is draw this up, and we'll have something that looks like this. So if we just get some idea now of what 70 over 4 pi looks like, um, let's go ahead and do that. What's that going to be, about 5 and a bit, 6, 5 and a... Let's just check. That's, hopefully my guesstimate isn't too bad. What's 4 times by pi? Uh, that gives 5.57. We're not going to write 5.57. I'm going to write 70. I'm going to write it as 70 over 4 pi. 
So this is 70 over 4 pi. This is going to be 4. And what we need right here is this, which is going to be h. So again, using Pythagoras, we know that h squared plus 4 squared is equal to this quantity of 70 over 4 pi, which we need to square. So h will be equal to the square root of 70 over 4 pi, which we need to square, minus 4 squared, which is minus 16. So in the calculator, what I'm going to do is simply do square root, the answer that I've got in there squared, minus 16. That gives us now 3.87. So we've got from here that this is 3.87 dot 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 dot. Using this, we can now find the volume. The volume is going to be one third pi r squared, which is going to give us now 16, multiplied by the height, which is 3.87 dot 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 stored in the calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have now on here pi times by 16 times by my answer that's in the calculator divided by 3 and that is going to give me now 64.95 and so on and so forth. So we'll say this is going to be 65.0 and the units we need are millimetres cubed. So millimetres cubed and that is given now to one decimal place. So a much more challenging example there. Um, but hopefully, uh, hopefully that's, uh, as you can see, that's what we end up getting. So there we go. That is finding the volume of a cone in lots of different scenarios.